World of Tanks, Crew Skills Guide. Uh, this is a, a guide that I wrote for World of Tanks for crew skills, and I cover each skill individually, starting with Brothers in Arms. So first, I'm going to give you a little bit of an overview. Skills can be added or improved using directives. Some skills work better with BIA vents or food consumables, such as repairs. Some crew members have zero perk skills, which do not use crew experience. Most crew members have a max of seven or so possible skills and perks. Skills work immediately. Perks need to reach 100% to work, although they've announced that they're going to change that. Some skills or perks are unique to a specific crew position. The intuition perk was changed significantly. So we're going to start with BIA. Uh, basically, it's like vents. It takes your training if you're at 100%. They're going to change that too. With BIA, it will increase it to perhaps 105% or something like that. Every crew member in the vehicle must have BIA for it to take effect. There used to be a similar perk called Sisterhood of Steel for female crew members, but it's now called BIA because they didn't work together. BIA can improve other skills and perks such as repairs, firefighting, etc. So if you have BIA, it's supposed to improve other skills like recon or uh, mentor, etc. Some recruits already include the BIA perk, they call it a zero perk skill. BIA improves most specs for a vehicle such as aim time, reload time, spotting distance, etc. Most people use BIA as their first skill. You should use BIA as your first skill if you want to make a long-term commitment to the game because it actually levels up fairly quickly compared to the other skills and you're going to get a benefit. It has a wide range of benefits. Recon. So this increases your spotting range. It's useful for light tanks and medium tanks because they do a lot of spotting. It's useful for passive and active scouting. It's more useful for active scouting because with passive scouting, you can use Binox, and with active scouting, they usually have a lower um, U range for the wheeled vehicles. Increases your chance of earning additional XP in every battle uh, through spot damage. Helps extend the view range for SPG to defend against enemy detection at the end of the game. So if you play SPG, you want to Im improve using recon so that you'll see the enemy because your view range is really bad, and they're likely to see you first. Research shows it has minimal impact on brawling heavy tanks. And the research I'm referring to is my own stats. My heavy tanks all have the maximum spotting, but they don't spot as much as my light tanks do. It helps you defeat enemy camo or concealment. So not only can you spot people in the open fields, but if they are behind a bush, and you improve your spotting, you might see them behind the bush. It does not work if the commander is injured. It's useful for all tanks if commander viewports become damaged, which is said right here. If your observation devices become damaged, I think the benefit is greater than if it's working normally. That's just one of the things that they included in order to make it more of a useful skill. Concealment, uh, this is, it's like camouflage, but it's supposed to mean that the driver knows how to hide the vehicle better. Concealment works best when your vehicle is in the open. If you're behind the bush, you're already behind the bush. You're already concealed. The bush hides you better. So when you're in the open is when you get the real benefit. Reduces the chance you get spotted when moving or firing. Uh, some tanks, like light tanks, when they move, it doesn't matter. Maybe the same with tank destroyers. But with most tanks, if you move, you're easier to spot. It's best for light tanks, medium tanks, and light tank destroyers. 
because they're faster, they're going to move around a lot more. Should be used by SPGs to help hide. So if you play SPG, you want concealment so it's harder for the enemy to find you, especially now that it's a lot easier. It can be more effective than the camo paint. So if you look at your camo ratings, you have the camouflage that you paint on. And I'm not talking about paint, I'm talking about the camo. The camo on the exterior of the vehicle is not as effective as concealment skill. So you want the concealment skill. It works passively. You always get the benefit throughout a battle. You don't have to do anything to activate concealment. It's just always on. Has more benefit early in the game when there are more potential enemy spotters. So you want concealment for the beginning of the game. More at the end of the game, it doesn't matter so much. I'm not saying it doesn't matter at all. I'm just saying you've got less people looking for you. Unless he didn't kill anybody on the enemy team. Jack of all trades. This helps with injured crew members, but cannot replace a health kit. I said, I'm going to do jack of all trades, no more health kits. It was a bad idea and it didn't work. Uh, my commander kept getting injured. You need the health kit for the added protection. With Spall Liner, you may be able to play without a health kit. There are, uh, there's equipment that reduces the chance of injury to your crew members, and you're going to want to use it with some vehicles. It is more useful on tanks with more crew members. So jack of all trades, if you only have two crew members, there's tanks with only two crew members, doesn't help very much. But if you've got six crew members and maybe five of them are injured, jack of all trades could be very useful uh, to help out um, one of the injured crew members. It is useful for frontline game mode because the games are 25 minutes long. And you're going to occasionally... You're probably going to have more crew injuries in frontline than in a random battle. And it's not going to make that much of a difference, but it will help you get through until you get to the repair shop. Frontline has free unlimited crew repair using repair circles, so you really don't need it. But you're going to get more benefit just because the games are longer and there's more people shooting at you. It's good for clan battles and rank battles where you have to have a perfect game. It's also good for getting marks of excellence and mastery badges. It does not help an injured commander. If your commander is injured, jack of all trades doesn't do anything. Not as useful for super heavy tanks or heavy tank destroyers because they're harder to penetrate and less likely to have injured crew. Repairs. It repairs modules up to 50%. This is the crew skill. So if they destroy your track, you're at 0%, and it brings it up to 50, not up to 100, which means a secondary hit will bring you down to zero easily. It helps reduce ammo racking and engine fires because it, because it raises the module hit points. When I say it raises, I should say increases while it's repairing. So you're less likely to get ammo racked if you have lots of repair crew skills because they hit you, they damage your ammo rack, but you're repairing it while they're reloading. By the time they reload, you've repaired it maybe to 50%, so it's harder for them to damage it as if you didn't have any repairs. It helps restore damage tracks quickly. It can happen really fast. It reduces time to repair a knocked out gun. So if your gun doesn't fire, having a lot of repairs uh, allows you to fire again quickly, which is good for your DPM. It reduces time to repair a stuck turret. Doesn't happen very often. Good for heavy tanks, turretless tank destroyers, and light tanks, because a turretless tank destroyer you're going to get tracked all the time. Light tanks, you're going to get tracked not intentionally. They're going to miss your vehicle, and they're going to accidentally hit your tracks, so you need repairs. And it's good for heavy tanks because people will shoot at your tracks to get you stuck out in the open. It's not useful for slow, light vehicles 
such as the SPG, FV315B, 183, etc. And the reason why is because they're just going to destroy your vehicle and you won't use the repairs. It should have said for low hit point vehicles. Crew skills guide. Firefighting. So the way firefighting works is you have a certain number of turns. Let's say it's 10 turns, and you lose a certain number of hit points of damage per turn. And if you have a lot of firefighting skills, you lose less hit points per turn. So you reduce damage taken per turn when the vehicle is on fire. One crew member at 100% firefighting can stop a fire if the vehicle has 100% hit points. So I had a tank destroyer, Yag Tiger 8.8, .8, with six crew members. One of them had firefighting. He had full hit points, got set on fire, and he survived because of one firefighter. If you have less than 100% hit points, it doesn't work. You will still take some fire damage if all your crew has 100% firefighting. So if you've got all of your crew with the firefighting skill, you still take damage when you get that hit. You're going to get the damage from the shot and the initial burst of fire, and then it's out really fast. But a 300 damage shot with the fire, with 100% firefighting crew, might be 600 damage. But that's better than 2,000, isn't it? Reduces the need for fire extinguisher consumable. I don't use the fire extinguisher on almost any vehicle. I can't remember the last time I used it. I use small repair kit, large repair kit, and health kit. Good for front-mounted engines because they set on fire often. Good for Chinese heavy and medium tanks because they set on fire often. Good for tanks that catch fire easily, light tanks. Good for tanks with weak armor because they'll fire AG at you. Not useful for super heavy tanks like the mouse and the Type 5 Heavy. They're difficult to set on fire. Not useful for SPG because it has low hit points. They're just going to destroy the SPG. If you had, you're not going to catch on fire. You're just going to be destroyed. And if you do catch on fire, the firefighting won't be able to stop it, even if you have the automatic fire extinguisher because they don't have enough hit points. It's not useful for low HP tanks because you'll just get destroyed in two shots or one shot. Designated target. Difficult. It's confused easily with dead eye. Took me many years to remember. Designated target is for spotting. Dead eye is for causing critical hits. So this is good for passive and active spotting. It's Good for passive spotting. Yeah, it's good for active spotting, but for active spotting, you have to auto-aim the target so that your gun is pointed at it because you're active spotting, you're driving around. You select a vehicle and auto-aim it, and he becomes a designated target, which means he stays spotted for a longer time, including anyone adjacent to him. It, in it includes adjacent tanks, Earns extra spot damage. So, because it increases the time the enemy is spotted, you can earn extra spot damage. It earns experience passively. It can be improved using directives. It's passive, but you do have to select the tank. It can be improved using directives, which means you can extend the number of time, the amount of time that it is uh, targeted. And there is equipment that can extend the amount of time that they're targeted. Or maybe there isn't. I'm not sure. It's not useful for SPG because the SPG uh, is going to be too far away. You have to have it within your view range. The vehicle that you use designated target, you have to be spotting it. If it's outside your spot range... It doesn't matter. And that's why it doesn't work with SPGs, because it's almost always outside the spot range. It's good for any vehicle that self-spots, which means you're keeping it lit more for yourself. It'll, it'll uh, be visible longer. Instead of 10 seconds, you may, maybe get 12 seconds. 
It's not useful for brawling tanks such as heavy tanks or super heavy tanks because they don't, um, they usually are close to the enemy. The enemy's not hide, hiding. So armorer, what this does is improves the accuracy of a damaged gun. If, if you don't understand what something is, just rewind the video and read what it says here. It makes the enemy visible for an additional two seconds. So the armor improves accuracy of a damaged gun. What that means is if your gun gets damaged, the bloom on the reticle gets bigger. With this, it doesn't get as big. It's good for vehicles that have weak mantlets because if your gun has a weak mantlet, your gun will get damaged frequently. It's good for bottom tier battles when your gun is more likely to be damaged. So if you're in like a 789 uh, battle and you're tier 7 going up against tier 9s, they're going to damage your gun more often. So you're going to get more use out of it when you're bottom tier. It's good for brawling tanks and hull down tanks because they're more likely to get hit in the gun. Not useful for SPGs because the SPG uh, is just going to be destroyed. It's useful for snipers who need long-range accuracy. Because if you're a sniper and your gun gets damaged, you won't have long-range accuracy and you're going to miss all your shots. Less useful for active and passive spotters such as light tanks because they're at they're because they're spotting they're not firing their gun so it doesn't matter if your gun gets damaged dead eye increases the chance to cause damage to enemy vehicle modules and crew doesn't work with he works about once every 30 shots fired three percent of your shots it's one out of 30 it works best with tanks with short reload times. And the reason why is because you're going to fire more shots. So if you use this with like a tier 2 vehicle that fires a burst of 30 shots, you're going to do a lot more critical hits per game than if you do it with a vehicle that has like 50 second reload. For most tanks, it takes effect once every 3 games, assuming 10 shots fired per game. My own experience playing heavy tanks, I fire about 10 shots per game. So once every three games, you'll get an extra critical hit, which could mean ammo racking and engine damage. Not useful for SPG uh, because uh, it might have to be within your view range or spotting range. I'm not sure. Or maybe it's just not supported. There was a time when SPG was HE rounds, and then they switched it back to AP. Good for ammo racking, setting engine fires, campaign missions, and clan wars. The reason why for campaign missions is because there are missions that say you have to get a critical hit. And it's good for clan wars because it will improve your performance by 3%. Less useful for long reloading guns, derp guns, high damage guns. Uh, because you just won't fire it as often. And, like, I have long reloads that I only fire three times per game, like the FV-215B-183, so that's why it's less useful for that vehicle. It's not useful for HE shells. It doesn't work with HE. It increases XP by a small amount when a critical hit occurs. So you get additional experience. If you use this, you're going to get more experience for however many games you play with that crew member. It could be hundreds of games. It's not a lot of additional experience, a small amount. Higher XP benefit against higher tier tanks. Good for players who aim for crew, such as the Commander Coppola, or internal modules, such as if you aim for the engine, etc. Go to the next page. This is a snapshot. Improves accuracy during turret rotation. You could be driving and you auto aim somebody and you drive past him, your turret is rotating. Or you're circle strafing him. Or it could be that your vehicle is stationary and you're letting your gun turn around on its own. 
or it could be that you have a tank destroyer and you're aiming the gun and you're looking through and you're looking for a weak spot. It also helps as you move the gun around from one weak spot to another. It only works when the turret is turning, the gun is moving, or driving while using auto aim because then the turret is turning. Works with turretless TDs when moving the gun. Works with fast light tanks using auto aim. It works well with super heavy tanks which keep the hull stationary and they allow the turret to rotate. It works well with stationary tanks sniping against moving targets because if a target is moving and you're not, your turret is going to move. Useful when moving gun to aim at weak spots if you're brawling. Not useful with side scraping or peeking and shooting because you don't turn the turret. You just go forward and backwards. Not useful when chasing a vehicle or running from a vehicle because you're not moving the turret when you chase somebody. It's good for circle strafing. Good for vehicles that have high gun bloom from turret rotation. Some vehicles are going to have a larger bloom when the turret rotates, probably tank destroyers. Good for derp guns. And the reason why is because they have a larger bloom. And if you have a larger bloom and you're reducing the penalty by a percentage, you're going to get more of a benefit in terms of the, the quantity of the size, the diameter, or the radius for the larger guns. Has the most effect on high damage guns, guns with poor gun handling, as I just explained. Good for hit and run tactics. If you do hit and run, you run behind the enemy and blast them in the rear and take off. It's going to help you aim your gun. Sound detection. Indicates an enemy SPG shot. And shows a direction. Good for SPGs. If you play SPG, it lets you know when the enemy has fired at you. It works better the further you are from the enemy SPG because then you have more time to react. It's useful for heavy tanks, large tanks, and slow tanks because they're often targets for SPG, so you're going to want to have the sound detection. It teaches good positioning and counter arty tactics because now you're being alerted that arty is going after you. You know you got to move to a better spot. If you don't have it, you're just going to drive around out in the open. You know what I mean? It's going to make you uh, come up with better positioning uh, faster. It helps identify location and direction of enemy SPGs. Uh, before, you would just get hit. Unless it was shooting from right in front of you, you would see the uh, arc up in the air. But now you can see exactly where it's coming from. It can prevent direct hits. If you're about to get hit, you can... Uh, move, and then maybe it'll miss you and do less damage. It gives you a chance to rotate your stronger armor towards incoming artillery fire, which means that you can angle your armor towards the artillery if you can rotate it fast enough in the direction that it's coming from. You reduce the total damage received in the game by using the sound detection because you're going to be avoiding damage. It helps keep you alive longer in the game, it helps increase your stats by keeping you in the game longer. Does not work in games which have no SPG. It's not useful on city maps. And it has limited use on city maps. My experience as an SPG player on a city map, I do half the amount of damage as an open field. Mostly useful on open field maps and frontline. So Eagle Eye, it it allows you to see which modules or crew members are injured or damaged on an enemy vehicle. It helps you learn to ammo rack and start engine fires or disable modules and crew. And the reason why is because you're going to fire at the Coppola, and then you're going to see, oh, look, I injured their commander. You're going to fire at their gun antlet and say, oh, look, I injured their gun. You're going to be looking at the tank, and it's going to tell you the ammo rack is damaged, but not the engine. So you know to fire at the ammo rack instead of the engine. It alerts you when an enemy vehicle is disabled. It'll tell you 
if the turret is stuck, if it can't reload, etc. It's good for heavy tanks and assault tanks and brawling because your gun is always pointed at enemy vehicles. And if you can, if you see a disadvantage, if the enemy is disabled, you know you can run at it or rush it. Not useful for SPG uh, because the vehicles are too far away. It has to be within your spotting range. It alerts you when an enemy vehicle has low DPM or is unable to fire. So let's say you are fighting against a vehicle and it's one-on-one. -on -one. If he has a problem where he can't fire, you can run in and start firing at him, and he won't be able to reload fast enough, and you'll be able to out-DPM him. Alerts you whether the target... It, it tells you whether to target an ammo rack or the engine. It tells you which one is damaged. It trains you to improve aim at weak spots because now you know, oh, if I fire here, look at what it did. If a tank hides, you can do the eagle eye and say, oh, look, this guy's hiding because his uh, gun is damaged. Sometimes you don't know why people are hiding. It's best in 1v1 games. Because you'll know if you have an advantage and his allies won't be able to help him. It's good for hit and run tanks because it shows you when you have a better chance of success. If you want to charge in and go after somebody, you'll know if he's impaired. It teaches you if your choice of ammo is effective. If you fire a regular round at a tank and it does damage, but let's say you fire HE and it damages the engine and it damages the ammo rack, then you know that you should fire HE instead of AP. On nations with many heavy tank branches, such as USSR, make at least one crew member with Eagle Eye as a second perk. And the reason why is because USSR has a lot of heavy tank branches. You're going to have a lot of heavy tank crew you're going to have a lot of heavy tank commanders. You're going to have a lot of premium heavy tanks. And you're going to sit there with your premium heavy tank and say, I've got 10 commanders to pick from. You can pick the one with the eagle eye and test it out and experiment with it. And if you like it, you can put it on your other commanders. Or for frontline, you can have a special crew member that has eagle eye, or the same for um, ranked battles or onslaught, etc. Use with female crew members, zero skill BIA, zero perk crew, because it allows you to have all of your other skills uh, without doing any extra training. Off-road driving reduces ground resistance when driving on soft and moderately soft terrain. That means you're going to you're going to maintain your speed when you're off-road, and you're going to spin faster when off-road. It works passively. You don't have to turn it on and off. You're always going to be driving off-road unless you're on a city map. So it does not work on city maps. It's good for open field maps and going uphill. More effective on vehicles with poor ground resistance. Every vehicle is different. It's good for turretless TDs, SPGs, and tanks that spin around a lot because it works like clutch braking. It lets you spin faster. Only off-road, not on pavement. Good for circle strafing. You're going to go around faster. Good for slow tanks because you don't want them to slow down more. Good for super heavy tanks because they're going to have trouble. They're too slow. Good for tanks with less horsepower or stock engines because you want to keep all the speed you can get. Good for large maps where you have to do lots of driving, such as frontline. On a small map, you're not going to get the benefit. It's good for fast tanks, such as light tanks, medium tanks, and light tank destroyers because you're going to do a ton of driving. Not useful for tanks that park, camp, sit, or hide. Controlled impact allows you to, to give more ramming damage and receive less ramming damage. So normally, if you ram an equal vehicle head-on, 
you're both going to take the same amount of damage. With this, you get the advantage. You get more, he gets less. Good for fast tanks with strong frontal armor. Good for SPGs and light tanks that collide with other tanks. However, you have to be moving. If you're parked and they collide with you, it doesn't help. So if you see someone's going to run into you, all you got to do is move forward and that's it. It's good for fast, heavy tanks. Because with a fast, heavy tank, you can just go ram anybody. Just hit the gas. I don't know if I put down jet boosters. Good for jet boosters, too. Good for SPGs at the end of the game when you're rammed by another vehicle, but you have to be move, moving. You don't have to move into him. You could be moving away from him. It requires player skill for the highest benefit. You have to learn how to use it. You get the benefit from an accidental impact, but you have to have player skill to target the vehicle and know how to hit them. It's best when ramming with strong frontal armor against weak enemy armor, or effective against weakly armored tanks, low-tier tanks, light tanks, SPGs. It's good for fast-paced games such as Frontline, where you do a lot of ramming, like in Last Waffentrager and Mirny 13, we ram constantly. You can produce equal or more damage than firing your gun. If your gun only does 100 damage because it's a stock gun, and maybe it's a lower tier gun, maybe ramming, you could do 200 damage. So you can do more damage by ramming. It makes the game more fun. It works passively in your favor when you receive collision damage if you're moving. It's good if you drive weak armor or light tanks and get rammed because you'll take less damage, and it does not work if your vehicle is stationary. And it doesn't work if you drive off a cliff. Smooth ride. Improves accuracy when firing on the move. This means you're driving forward, not turret rotation. Your vehicle must be moving. You have to be driving. You know how when you hit the gas, the reticle gets bigger? This makes it get less bigger. It gives you a better bloom. It's good for tanks driving and using auto aim, especially if the vehicle's in front of you. You'll get less bloom. It's good for heavy tanks that side scrape because you're moving forward and backwards. Peek out and fire, you're moving forward and backward. And city battles because you're going to be moving forwards and backwards. You get less bloom when you move. You don't have to fire. It's when you move, you get the benefit. It's not going to bloom as much. Good for snipers who move fire. It's good for snipers who move forward, fire immediately, then pull back. Same with playing a ridgeline. You advance to the ridgeline, fire, and retreat. This is the one that's going to help you have a smaller bloom. Good for fast-paced games. Good for frontline. It's great for medium tanks because they do a lot of forward and back, forward and back, forward and back. Heavy tanks don't do that. Medium tanks do. It's best for derp guns and guns that do high damage because they have poor gun handling. You're going to improve their poor gun handling. If a gun has amazing gun handling, it's just going to have a small impact. Less useful for accurate guns or low damage guns because they're just more accurate. It works even if you drive for a split second. If you tap that key and you inch forward, you get the bloom. And this is going to reduce your bloom. I'm sure that you have to fire. So what it probably does is, you know how when you fire, the bloom gets bigger, and when you drive, the bloom gets bigger? This is going to, um, to fix it. So that when you fire, you're going to have a better bloom. Good when chasing vehicles or being chased by vehicles because your turret doesn't move. It's good when advancing forward in city streets. You're chasing after somebody in the city or you're driving at him. It's going to give you an advantage. You're not going to bloom as much. The more stationary you are, the less useful it is. Less effective for autoloaders, which remain stationary between firing shots. So if you fire five rounds and you don't move, 
you go into position, fire five rounds, and then you retreat, you don't get the benefit on all five shots. You only get it on one shot because you were only moving for that first shot. We're stationary the other four shots. Less effective for stationary sniping. You're sitting and waiting to ambush somebody. You don't get the benefit. You roll forward, fire, move back, you get the benefit. Preventative maintenance reduces the chance the engine catches on fire. It's good for tanks to catch on fire often. It will reduce how often they catch on fire. It's helpful for Chinese heavy tanks and medium tanks. Good for tanks with front-mounted engines. It could be used instead of firefighting on the driver. So if you have the driver, don't put firefighting. Put preventative maintenance because it reduces the chance of fire and you don't need firefighting as much on all your other crew members. Reduces need for fire re reduces need for firefighting crew skills and fire extinguishers. Allow for extra consumable slot because you don't need the fire extinguisher. It's good for engines that have a high chance of being set on fire. Prevents fires which might cause high damage. Good for light armored vehicles because they catch on fire from HE rounds. Not useful for SPGs or low hit point tanks because it's just going to destroy the vehicle. The engine won't catch on fire. It's good for high hit point tanks that have a lot of hit points. If you got low number of hit points, it doesn't matter. Good for tanks with fewer crew members because they have less firefighting. Good for zero skill BIA, zero perk, and female crew members. Because you get to add this perk, plus you get to do your other skills because you've got one zero perk, so you don't have to research it. It's good for clan battles and rank battles. Stay in the game longer. It's good for slow-moving light armor vehicles that get hit by HE often. Not useful for super heavy tanks or well-armored tanks because they don't catch fire, so it doesn't matter. Clutch braking. This is the traverse speed. It's the tank spinning around. Good for vehicles that spin often. I believe this is on any surface, so this works on pavement and off pavement. So it works with turretless tank destroyers and SPGs. SPGs are constantly using it. Good for slow tanks, such as super heavy tanks. They take a long time to turn around, so they have a slow traverse speed. Good for fast tanks that change direction often. I did a race through a city map where I started in Himmelsdorf and I drew, drove all around. And with the clutch braking, it was a you know, like a half a second faster. It's good for slow tanks. Did I say that already? Good for city maps where vehicles change direction often. Good for circle strafing. Good for fast action games because you're moving a lot. Good for tanks that ram other vehicles because you need to aim at the enemy while he might be moving. It's good for driving in tight areas between rocks, between other vehicles because you're going to have a better turning circle. Allows for sharper turns. Good for players that change their hull armor angle often. I do that. If you watch me play, I'm constantly angling. Like, I'll fire the gun, change my angle. Fire the gun, change my angle. Other players don't do that. It helps when angling the hull to block damage, because you can get to your angle faster. Situational awareness extends spotting range. Through spotting range. Helps defeat enemy concealment and camo. The more effective, it's more effective than the commander recon skill. It's twice as effective. It's useful when the commander is injured or when viewports are damaged. So if the commander is injured, he can't see very far. So it's good to have the situational awareness. Passively earns additional experience. You want it on almost every tank. Not so much on heavy tanks. Works passively, no skill required. It's good for light and medium tanks. Not useful so much for heavy tanks. 
it's good for tanks that self-spot because you're increasing your spotting distance. It helps with missions and campaign missions because some of them will say you got to spot more. Will improve your World of Tanks rating, XP, crew experience by a small amount over a large number of games. Good for wheeled vehicles because they don't have a good spotting range. Good for vehicles that do not reach 445 maximum spotting distance because it gives you a chance to get closer to the maximum spotting range. A lot of your opponents are going to be at that range. So they'll be able to see you and you can't see them. So you got to add this. Good for low height and low profile vehicles. Short vehicles have lower spotting range. Useful in mid-tiers when tanks have low spotting range. Useful on large maps because you can, smart, you can spot more of an area. It's increasing your radius. And some maps, your spotting circle goes outside the map. Like if you play on Westfield, if you move around, your spotting circle is outside the map. On a large map, all of your spotting circle is within the map, so you have more area, more surface area. Not useful on city maps or maps with many hills or blocking objects. It's only good on city maps if they have a long corridor. Important skill for light tanks after BIA and fast medium tanks. You want to prioritize spotting instead of concealment. It's good for any fast, small tank such as E25 because they do a lot of spotting. So they want the additional spotting range. They can move to the front line and do some spotting and then run away. Good for active and passive scouting. More effective in battle with more enemy targets such as front line or grand battles because it's a diameter, it's a circle, it's in all directions. So there's more potential targets. Less useful with fewer opponents. Useful for resetting cap because you might be able to spot the enemy because you have an extended range and he might not be able to spot you. So you want to have the best range when you reset cap. Useful for ambush. Useful for ambushing or ambush sniping enemy vehicles. You'll see me play. I'll go and hide somewhere, wait for some tanks to come by off in the distance, spot them and shoot at them. Call for vengeance. Enables a radio operator who survived to report enemy positions for another two seconds. You can get it more than that also. This is the most underused yet powerful perk in the game. You can earn an additional 10% spotting damage on average per game. That's from my own testing. Let's say you're spotting and you get 10 hits that you spotted. With this, you might get another one. That's a 10% increase in spotting damage. It allows you to passively earn additional spotting damage and experience. So if you are playing and then you're out of the game, for an extra couple seconds, it'll let you get some spotting damage. And you could even leave the battle and still get more spotting damage. And you can sit and watch it tally up additional spotting damage. It works best early in the game when you have many allied snipers and fewer allied spotters. If you're the only spotter, it works better. It's best for fast, light, and medium tanks. It's good when you have SPGs on your team. You can use it for any vehicle. This is you would put I would put this on a heavy tank, definitely. If you're the last one on your flank and you're out of the game. The guy who took you out, you spotted him. The SPG hits him, you get the spot damage, even if you're already destroyed. You have It's good when you have SPGs on your team, good for large maps, where you're more likely to be isolated or far from your allies, because you'll be the only one spotting. Good for games with a higher hit point pool. With higher tiers or more vehicles, there's more hit points in the game, you get more spotting damage. Works best with when coupled with binocs, recon, and situational awareness, plus spotting directives and related equipment. Because you want an additional 
distance. This is adding the time, and then the other factor is distance, more distance, more time. This adds time. The other one is designated target that adds time. Helps light tanks with weak guns earn more experience because they're not firing. So they want more spotting time. Works with any vehicle. If you're an SPG and someone comes and takes you out, and then your ally takes that guy out, you could get more spotting damage because of this perk. You must have at least one ally for this perk to work. It doesn't work if you're the last guy on the team. It does not work if you're the last player on your team. Works even if the radio operator is not trained for your vehicle or is below 100% training level. So let's say you have a new radio operator. He's got no skills. Then you got another one got all the skills but isn't trained for the vehicle, take the one that has all the skills. Even if he's not trained, you'll get the benefit, full benefit. You'll get reduced radio signal range, but it doesn't matter because your radio is probably good enough to reach me all the way around the map anyway. You can have additional time added using directives and equipment. It's good for players who die early in the game or for low-skilled players because it's passive. You don't have to have skill for this to work. And if you're a low skilled player, there's probably an enemy tank nearby that you spotted, and your allies will damage him, and you'll get the, the credit. It does not work if your vehicle drowns or if you self destroy your own vehicle using HE, because the radio operator has to survive. Does not work if your radio operator is injured or knocked out. Use your health kit to heal the radio operator to ensure it takes effect. So if this takes effect after your, after your vehicle is destroyed. So make sure your radio operator is healed when your vehicle is destroyed. You use the repair kit and then you get the benefit after. You can see the additional spot damage received after your vehicle is destroyed for about two to four seconds. You can sit there and watch it. You can watch the hits come in, and you can see the benefit. How much more have we got? Wow, there's so much more to do. Signal boosting. This extends the radio range. Works best on large maps. Works best with fewer tanks in the game because you don't have your allies helping you relay messages works best in lower tiers because their radio range is not very good or useful when tanks have stock radios because the radio range is lower you can save money on radio upgrades because you don't need to research the the better radio and you don't need to buy it because you've got a signal boost <coughs> think about it Let's say one is 700 and the other one's 770. The signal boosting is equal. Keep the one that's 700 with the signal boosting and it's equal to the 770. You don't have to buy it. You don't have to research it. Not useful on small maps or higher tiers or with too many allies in the battle because everybody is relaying radio so it's not useful. In fact, you could have less of a range and you'll be fine. Helps offset signal range loss when the radio operator is not trained for the vehicle or is less than 100% trained. Good for frontline grand battles and large maps. Good for fast tanks that travel long distances and for SPGs. The SPG needs to communicate with vehicles that are far away because the allies can't hit the vehicles that are far away. Only the SPG can. So he wants that signal range. And the fast light tanks want it also to get the spot damage. Good for SPGs and fast tanks and frontline and grand battles. If you play frontline, you'll go beyond the radio range often. And if you're in grand battles, you'll go beyond the radio range often. Improves your spot damage on large maps because you can relay tank positions more reliably. So if you're a light tank and you're spotting, 
you're going to get more spot damage, not per game, but over the course of thousands of battles, you're going to get more spotting damage because you're going to be able to report it uh, more reliably. Helps when the radio antenna is damaged. So if you're, I've had games where all the enemies disappeared because they damaged the guy's radio and we had to wait until it was repaired before we could see what was going on. It happened on Karelia. Does not help if the radio operator is injured. Um, maybe it does. I'm not sure. Not impacted by terrain, mountains, buildings, hills, etc. Usually, if someone is injured, his skills and perks might not work. So, if your commander is injured, six cents might not work. I wanted them to add a feature so that the terrain reduced radio range, but they haven't done it. I even told them an algorithm to do it easily, but they haven't done it. Relay extends signal range of allied communications within your radio coverage. So they have to be adjacent to you. Your radio and their radio have to communicate, and then they get a boost. It works best when you have many allies because many people are being boosted. More useful in low and mid tiers because they have bad radios. Good for TDs, SPGs, light tanks, and snipers because SPGs need the range, light tanks need the range, TDs want somebody to spot for them, and snipers want someone to spot for them. So they need to have uh, better radio coverage. It's good when platooning with fast light tanks or platooning with spotters. You platoon with a friend, one is an SPG and one is a spotter, and they're working together. They want to have good radio communication. It's good for large maps, frontline, and grand battles. It's best when allies use designated target, perk, and directives because. They are reporting more vehicles that they spot, and you're relay they're being relayed. That's what the purpose of relaying is. It's relaying targets. Best of you are in the center of the map or in the center of your allies because there's a circle, and it's going to benefit everyone around the circle. If you're in the corner, you only get the benefit of the quarter um, of the map that's showing works best with clans where the team is trying to help each other. Because if you're playing in a random battle, you're like, who cares if my ally has a problem? But when you're in a clan, you're all working together for a common goal. So you want the radio relay. You want everybody to have it because everybody wants to help each other. It does not help you reach further. It helps your adjacent allies reach further. So they might reach one of your allies you might boost them and reach an ally that they couldn't reach before. It helps you and your allies get more spotting damage because they can report it to further sniping targets. It helps light tanks or spotters keep in touch with distant SPGs and vice versa. Now, keep in mind, you're going to get this skill, and then maybe you're going to play a Tier 2 game on a large map with a premium tank, to train your crew or earn some credits, and this is going to help you. It's going to help you train your crew and get spotting damage and mastery badges and low tiers, etc. Useful when allies have injured radio operators, stock radios, or damaged radio equipment. So if your allies have reduced radio range for some reason, you're helping them have better radio coverage. Useful when allies have radio operators trained to less than 100% or have stock equipment, skills, or consumables. So if they don't have the um, vents, they don't have food consumable, they have reduced radio range, you're helping them improve the radio range. It does not work unless you have two or more allies in the game. You only If it's you and one other guy, it doesn't work. you got to have you and two others does not work if you have no radio contact with any allies. You have to be in contact with at least one ally. 
Does not help if your equipment does not help if your equipment is damaged. Only if your adjacent allies' equipment is damaged. Because it's not extending your range. It's extending your adjacent allies' range. It helps the SPGs and spotters if they're far apart, with one or more allies in between. So you got one gun, you got you and your ally far away and one guy in between. And that one guy in between, you're helping him reach the guy that's far away. That's the ideal situation. Good for SPGs and fast tanks and frontline and grand battles. Mostly directly benefits distant spotters and SPGs. Distant. Because you're improving the distance, the range. Very useful for grand battles, tier 10 and frontline, tier 8. You'll be playing in frontline, you go driving around and you spot an enemy tank, but your allies can't see it because you're too far away. And it happens. And it would be nice if you've got a bunch of guys and you're extending their range in all directions, especially if you're in the center of the map, like Sector E, and then everybody gets a little bit of a better view. Especially if everybody on your team is doing it, it really helps everybody. You close up all the gaps. More benefit when you have more allies in the game. More necessary when you have fewer allies in the game. More benefit when you have more allies. Because you're helping more allies get greater range, more area. If you're helping 14 allies improve their range, getting that extra area, let's say it's 10% more, you're helping a lot of people. But let's say there's only three guys left in the game. You're helping one guy extend by 10%, a little bit of extra area. Most of the map is not being covered, but it's more necessary because you need to reach the faraway allies that have spread out. So when you spread out, it's going to help. When they're clumped together, it extends more range, but when it helps the people that have spread out. Adrenaline rush accelerates gun loading if the vehicle has less than 10% of its hit points left. Good for fast-paced games because you're going to be low on hit points and you're still going to be playing. Good for frontline because you play until you're destroyed you're going to have low hit points, and then you get to fire faster. Good for vehicles that take lots of damage, because at some point they get to fire faster. Most benefit for tanks with long reloads, because a 3 second 10% advantage is 0.3 seconds, but a 30 second 10% advantage gives you an additional 3 seconds. So the more seconds that the more seconds you gain. Less useful for rapid-fire guns. And it'll have a small impact. It's good. F so that means it's going to be better in the higher tiers with heavy tanks, etc. It's good for autoloaders because they could have long reload times, like 40 or 50 seconds. Good for 1v1 battles where it's good when you're one-on-one. -on -one. If you're low on hit points, it gives you a little bit of an advantage you might be able to get two shots in instead of one because you're reloading faster when the enemy only gets one shot. That's why it's better. You could do double the amount of damage because you can reload faster. More useful with few tanks in the game because if you have a lot of tanks in the game, you're going to run away and retreat, and then you're going to snipe, and then your damage, how many hit points you have, doesn't matter. Best when playing against equally equipped enemy tanks because it gives you an advantage if you are equally equipped. You'll reload faster. Best for well-armored tanks, super heavy tanks, heavy tank destroyers because when they have low hit points, they're difficult to destroy, so they'll get more use out of it. Good for distant snipers that can hide easily because they'll get to shoot again and again and again, and because they can hide, they can't be destroyed easily. Good for tanks that can retreat. One of the least popular perks. Good for tanks that have two loader crew members because for one, you're going to put safe stowage. 
and the other one you put adrenaline rush. You don't put two safe stowage on the same tank. Intuition. When you switch ammo, it reloads faster. So it's good for players who change rounds often. It's good for players who need premium rounds as quickly as possible. It's good for players trying to reset the cap with HE rounds. It's best for a fast game, less useful for a slow game, because in a slow game, you just you don't need to quickly reload. Not useful for vehicles with only one type of ammo. You can't use it at all because you can't switch ammo. More benefit with long reloads and auto loaders because you want them to reload faster. It can prevent situations where you have to restart or reload to switch rounds. That was with the old intuition. The new intuition works a little bit differently. You, you load the wrong round and you hit the C button to reload with a different ammo and it will prevent um, a longer reload. This perk was changed into a skill, and it used to work differently. It used to prevent restarts. Now it just reduces the reload time. Okay, last one, safe stowage. Increases ammo rack durability. The ammo rack has hit points. Let's say it has 200 hit points. It increases the number of hit points to 250. That's how it works, and it's different for every tank. You reduce the ammo rack damage because if they do 200 hit points of damage and your ammo rack has 200 hit points, it goes down to zero and it might detonate. But if you got 250 and they hit you, it won't, it'll go down to 50 and it won't detonate. So it protects you. Reduces usage of repair kits. Prevents long reloads due to damaged ammo racks. Reduces vehicle damage due to ammo rack detonation. Can be enhanced with directives. Good for tanks that store ammo in the front of the hull because they can be ammo racked easily. Good for tanks that get ammo racked easily. Good for weak armored tanks. Prevents your DPM from falling. If, you, if your ammo rack gets injured, your DPM goes down until you repair it. Not as useful for SPG because they don't get ammo rack, you'll just destroy them. And same with light tanks. They just get destroyed. Better for lower tier tanks against higher tier enemy tanks. And the reason why is because the higher tier tanks have higher penetration, they do more damage, you want the safe stowage, it will protect you when you play low tier. Not as useful for super heavy tanks, heavy tank destroyers, or well armored tanks, because it's hard to damage their ammo rack. Should be the second skill for loader after BIA. It's not useful to have two loaders with this perk in the same tank. And a tank with two loaders should have safe stowage on one loader and adrenaline rush on the other to reduce crew training costs. Wow, that was long. I hope you watched the whole thing. On my forum at cheapbooks.c, I've got the crew skills guide, the crew training guide, which shows you how to train quickly crew tips, crew skill recommendations. I go through commander, gunner, etc., cetera, et cetera, and I show you um, what to do on each one. You know, but I got to be honest, my, I'm tired of speaking, so I'm going to cut this here. This is the crew skills guide. If you want crew skill recommendations, it's going to be in another video. If you have any questions or comments, please post below.